Today we're talking about imitation. When you're learning any creative pursuit, imitating other people's work is often part of the process. It is a good way to learn and try new techniques. You might not only imitate someone's style, but their process and techniques too. That's why videos of creatives posting their gear and their work processes are so popular. You might look at the lenses a photographer uses and think, if I got that lens, maybe I could take photos like her. Or you might buy a set of Micron pens because you think it'll make you better at drawing. That's rarely the case, of course. But if you do get that lens or those pens, you'll probably go ahead and try and imitate a certain photo or, or draw in the style of your favorite artist. When I was a kid, I painted a copy of Van Gogh's Sunflowers. When I first discovered illustration was a thing, I started out by drawing Art Nouveau posters. I loved the style, the shapes, the line quality, all of that. Then I moved on to drawing comic book characters and imitating that style. When I was a student, there were two hot illustrators at the top of their game that I loved and I tried to imitate. Not copying specific illustrations, but techniques and style, seeing if I could do what they could do. And they were Jasper Goodall and Cy Scott. I got in touch with Jasper a few weeks ago to admit this and also to ask if there was anyone he imitated when he was learning. Embarrassingly for me, he said no, but I know I'm definitely not the only one. I had no chance of imitating them to any decent standard, obviously. They had 10 or 15 years experience on me for one thing. They'd worked hard to develop their own unique styles and skills over the years, but everybody starts somewhere. And often where you start is being inspired by another artist. We learn a lot by copying, speaking, walking. If you want to learn Kung Fu, you copy what the teacher does. We even copy ourselves. When you're experimenting and you're trying new things and you get accidental results that you like, you copy yourself to try and recreate that result. That's a really important part of developing a unique style. When you're young, you align yourself with things that you like. There was a kid at my school that dressed like Fred Durst from Limp Bizkit. And at the time, it seemed perfectly normal. <laughs> but that's the same with how you learn to develop your creative process. You try to imitate what you like. However, being able to copy someone else's work does not make you an illustrator. Just like being able to follow a recipe doesn't make you a chef. It's only when you advance beyond that stage, the beginner's level, and you find your own inspiration and your own ideas that you'll start learning how to be an illustrator. Any illustrators you see out there that are copying other people's work, no matter how advanced their technical skills are, are beginners. They've never been brave enough to take the next step they need to be real artists. More practically speaking, when you become a professional illustrator, you cannot present work that is an imitation of another artist's work. It is disrespectful, lazy, and it only demonstrates to people that you are not creative. If you have a favorite illustrator like Yuko Shimizu, for example, and you launch your career with a portfolio full of poor imitations of her work, and I guarantee they will be poor imitations, you'll be laughed at. Everybody that knows what they're talking about in the industry, knows who Yuko Shimizu is and what her work looks like. They will see that you're trying to copy her and that will be the last opportunity you have with that person. The only clients that will hire an artist that copies other artists are bad clients. Clients that can't afford to work with the real Yuko Shimizu or clients that have been turned down by the real artist. Do you really want to fill your days working for bad clients knowing that you're a distant second best to the artist they really wanted to work with? I mean, it is a strategy, I can't deny that, but it's not gonna to lead to a very satisfying career. If you wanna copy someone, copy someone who isn't famous because you have a better chance of getting away with it. Not that I'm recommending that you do that, but I don't understand why people think they can get away with it. A young illustrator emailed me a couple of weeks ago applying for representation with a portfolio full of copies of one of the artists the agency already represents. Perspectives, color, composition, texture, subjects, shadows, just completely lifted from our artist's work. Now clearly this young artist is a big fan, but from my point of view, he wasn't demonstrating any creative ability whatsoever. Technical skill, yes, but no original thought. Why he chose to get in touch with our agency specifically, I have no idea. It shows a real lack of self-awareness. Clearly, he didn't realize what he was doing was wrong. He's young, he's new, it's forgivable, but he's also wasted his time making a portfolio full of work that's of no real use to him and will hold him back more than anything else. Legally speaking, you can't copyright a style. I'll repeat that, you can't copyright a style. 
So legally speaking, these people that copy styles aren't doing anything wrong, but they are lying to themselves and everyone else. Whatever success they attain is false, they haven't earned it and it won't last. It's easy to write these people off as being talentless, but maybe they do have their own amazing creative ideas in there somewhere. But we'll never know unless they stop copying other artists, take that next step and become authentic. When I'm confronted with a style that is imitating another artist's work, I don't get mad. Remember, copycats like this are beginners, and you don't get mad at a beginner, you teach them. I simply try to explain why they should develop their own unique style, and also what impression they will give to the wider professional illustration community if they imitate another artist. There's nothing to be achieved by making a beginner feel bad. If you find someone copying your work, your first reaction will likely be an emotional anger response but don't contact them in anger. You'll feel bad, they'll feel bad, and they might not get the message. If you get in touch in a friendly manner to say that you can see that they're imitating your work and you think they would be better served by trying to develop their own unique style, you have a much better chance of changing the situation. And you also come across like an absolute and total professional. Chances are the fact that you're even getting in touch with them at all will be so embarrassing for them that they'll change their ways. People either don't realize that they're doing anything wrong or they don't think they're gonna get caught. So simply getting in touch and explaining the facts is gonna have a big impact on that person. As much as you might wanna protect your style, the fact is, if you get famous as an illustrator, you'll get some copycats, no doubt about it. But you shouldn't be too precious about your style. Artists that show their time-lapse process videos online and share tips about how to do certain things and teach courses on Skillshare or wherever else, uh, they're the ones that are absolutely rock solid. You know, they're confident in their abilities and they're not precious about it. They always know that they can develop their style more, do new things. Those artists are the ones that have long careers because they're not precious about their style and they're always evolving and trying new things, which is essential for an artist. If you find a style you like and protect it fiercely and try to keep it a secret, A, someone will still figure out how you do what you do, and B, you'll end up doing the same thing for too long because you're holding onto it too tight. You might have a few years of fame and success, but if you don't evolve, you'll simply go out of fashion, and then you'll have to start from square one again. You'll also constantly be angry at people trying to copy your style, and that's such a waste of energy, energy that you could be putting back into developing your own work. There is a difference between imitation and stealing. If somebody is literally stealing your work, that's another thing entirely. And we'll talk about copyright infringement another time. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and uh, share it with whoever else you think might find it useful. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Stick your questions in the comments. And if you're wondering about something, uh, then chances are somebody else is too. See you on the flippity flop.